Hi there! In this video, we are going to talk about a topic that I find really interesting, which is the relationship between the linear regression and the Gaussian distribution. More specifically, I will try to explain to you why the least square algorithm is equivalent to placing a Gaussian on each point on the regression line and then maximizing the likelihood. So let's dive right into it. First things first, let's recap what we are doing in linear regression and for the sake of keeping things simple, I'll resume my explanations only to the 2D case. But remember that everything that I am going to say generalizes to multiple dimensions. So, given a set of data points, linear regression tries to find the linear model that best fits our data. And the linear model is defined by the intercept theta0 and the slope theta1. And the goal here is to find the values of theta0 and theta1 that minimize the sum of the square differences between the observed y values and the predicted y values based on the linear model, a method known as least squares. So we have that we want to minimize the following sum from y equals to 1 of yi minus y hat i, which is theta0 plus theta1 xi, everything squared. Remember this since we'll need it later. Now, let's talk about the Gaussian distribution, also known as the normal distribution. Basically, it is a continuous or discrete probability distribution that is commonly used to model random variables and is defined by two parameters, the mean denoted by mu and the standard deviation denoted by sigma. And the two are bundled together by the following formula. Also, I have a video which explains the maths behind the Gaussian distribution if you want to take a deeper look. So how do these two concepts relate to each other? Well, it turns out that the least squares method using linear regression is equivalent to assuming that each data point is drawn from a Gaussian distribution with a mean that lies on the regression line. So let's do just that, let's compute the maximum likelihood and let's see if that holds true. Thus, the maximum likelihood in this case is defined as follows. We want to find the parameters theta0 and theta1 that maximize the product of all probabilities which are defined by the following Gaussian and that are put on each point of the regression line. Now, because the logarithm is a monotonically increasing function, finding the parameters that maximize this function would be equivalent to finding the parameters that maximize the logarithm of this function. And because the logarithm of a product is equal to the sum of logarithms, we get the following. We can further transform the product in the logarithm into a sum of logarithms and we get the following. Now, we can remove the exponential function since we are taking the logarithm and we can also notice that the first term doesn't depend on the parameters theta0 or theta1, so we can just remove it and we get the following equation. Finally, finding the maximum of a negative of a function is equivalent to finding the minimum of that function and if we remove the denominator, which doesn't depend on theta0 or theta1, we get the following, which is exactly, exactly the optimization formula used in less squares. So, what this tells us is that the less squares method and the maximum likelihood estimation under a Gaussian assumption are equivalent. In other words, when you use the less squares method to find the best fitting model, we are implicitly assuming that each data point is drawn from a Gaussian distribution with a mean that lies on the regression line. What this means is that the Gaussian distribution is a fundamental component of linear regression because instead of just trying to minimize the sum of squared errors, we can think of this problem as trying to find the most likely values of the parameters given the data under the assumption that the errors from the regression line are normally distributed. This perspective can be useful in understanding the strengths and limitations of the less squares method and in developing new methods that are more robust or flexible. For instance, we can assume that our yi don't come from a Gaussian distribution but from some skewed distribution like Poisson, which in fact changes the end result of our line fitting algorithm leading to what's known in the literature as the generalized linear models, but more on this later. And that's basically it for this video. I hope you found this explanation helpful and please hit the like button if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the content I'm creating on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.